Scuderia Ferrari achieved an incredible pole position with Charles Leclerc at the Baku City Circuit in Azerbaijan. The Marinello team succeeded in everything they did, starting with the setup. The base setup developed back at the factory was already very good when the two cars hit the track on Friday afternoon. However, the chosen compromise had some shortcomings in slow corners because the SF24's grip at low speeds was not up to the mark. Nevertheless, Ferrari reacted brilliantly by adjusting the ride height, which provided the necessary grip to improve the performance of the Italian car. Ferrari had shown from the first free practice session that it could be a contender in qualifying, and throughout the weekend, up until Q2, it was the fastest car in the first sector. The trend was more or less this, SF24 was the best in the first sector. Red Bull was clearly superior in sector two, and sector three was a battle between Mercedes and Aston Martin. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, but especially the Monegasque driver, were very fast in the first sector but then lost about a tenth to the Max Verstappen. Sergio Perez duo in the second sector and struggled in the final part. This might have been due, as suggested by the Sky Sport F1 journalists, to the fact that Ferrari's engineers had chosen a setup that took better advantage of the long straights, sacrificing the middle part of the track. However, this explanation didn't fully convince us. Just think about Monaco, a track where Charles Leclerc won this year. Why sacrifice Ferrari's strength in slow corners, one of the few strong points of the SF24 this year? Something didn't add up, and it still doesn't add up because if we look at the best sectors recorded at the end of Q3, we notice a significant reversal of trends. At the end of qualifying, Sergio Perez was the fastest in the first sector, clocking 35.649, Charles 35.702, Piastri 35.782. The Monegasque driver made a huge difference in the second sector, posting a 40.813, while Oscar Piastri, the second fastest, did 40.972. Sergio Perez stopped at 41.043, and Carlos Sainz at 41.138, confirming he hadn't changed anything between Q2 and Q3. The third sector went to Fernando Alonso's Aston Martin with 24.524, with Charles Leclerc posting a 24.825, Oscar Piastri 24.803, and Sergio Perez 24.966. With setups locked for the entire session, what could explain this change? In our opinion, Charles Leclerc may have adjusted something in tire management during his fast lap in Q3. The Monegasque may have decided to sacrifice the first sector to have more grip in the central part and towards the end of the lap in the final sector. Red Bull, on the other hand, took the opposite approach, being more competitive at the start and less so in the final stretch. Whatever Charles managed to do, it allowed him to beat his rivals in the most unexpected sector, S2, which had been Red Bull's strength up until Q3. Additionally, it's worth mentioning Ferrari's handling of the Pirelli tires. The front-end activation was perfect. This was an important factor because Baku's layout favored cooling of the tires, particularly at the front, creating a thermal imbalance between the two axles. This phenomenon, in turn, significantly lowers the performance of an F1 car. This is exactly what happened to Mercedes and, to a lesser extent, Red Bull. Without further ado, let's now analyze the telemetry and note where Ferrari made the difference. Let's examine the comparison between the telemetry of Charles Leclerc's pole lap and Oscar Piastri's lap, who was 0.321 seconds behind after a Q3 session completely dominated by the Marinello team. The Monegasque driver put together the perfect lap, gaining on the Australian in every sector, in every single corner except for turn three, where he lifted off much earlier than car number 81, and turn 15, Charles Leclerc carried more speed through the middle of the corner, managing the pedals optimally, as has been mentioned many times. In fact, he is the only driver on the grid who adopts a very particular driving style. This refers to the so-called trailing, semi-open throttle, allowing for a balanced weight distribution while cornering and immediately applying all the car's power, keeping the engine revs slightly higher to improve traction on exit. This driving style also helps combat the oversteer that plagued Ferrari during all free practice sessions. When braking, the car's weight shifts entirely to the front, lightening the rear. Keeping the throttle semi-open allows for slightly loading the rear, resulting in better balance during the corner and on exit. Leclerc made a significant difference particularly in turn 16, where he showed superior performance compared to Oscar Piastri. Although both drivers braked at the same point in the corner,
Charles Leclerc managed to accelerate earlier without suffering from the typical oversteer of this section of the track. Nailing this corner on the Azerbaijan track is crucial not only in qualifying, as it significantly affects the 2,200-meter long straight where drivers are flat out for over 20 seconds, but also in the race, where a good exit from turn 16 is fundamental for both defending and attacking. Ferrari focused on this detail with great care, thanks to the Monegasque driver, providing Charles Leclerc with an optimal setup for both the qualifying session and today's race, where managing tire degradation will be key. The Monegasque driver expressed his appreciation for the car, finding it comfortable from the start and only needing to make minor adjustments to the setup. The aerodynamic load used seems to be the right one. Ferrari opted for the same rear wing specification used at Spa, slightly less downforce than McLaren, which provides an increase in speed of about 3 km per hour on the main straight and every acceleration zone. This could prove crucial for defense in the race, in addition to Charles Leclerc's excellent tire management in recent races. The opposite happened at Red Bull, who, from the first free practice sessions, seemed to struggle in the last sector. On Friday, this was mainly due to the fact that the Honda engine was significantly underpowered, but by FP3, it was clear that something was wrong in turn 16, where Max was losing 0.200s to the Monegasque driver. As the Dutchman himself said in post-qualifying interviews, between the final free practice session and qualifying, they tried to make some changes to the car's setup, probably adjusting the ride height, which only further unbalanced the car. The Dutch driver even complained about bouncing under braking in certain parts of the track. Based on data relating to the G4 stats, we can observe that Red Bull struggled a lot under braking, unlike Ferrari, where Charles Leclerc is always able to brake a few meters later and generate more force in deceleration. Despite everything, Red Bull continues to be very competitive in traction, being once again, as seen in FP2 and FP3, the team that can keep the throttle fully open for the longest time throughout the lap, an excellent indicator of how competitive the car is in terms of traction. Since 2021, the Ferrari driver has been the Prince of Baku, at least on Saturdays, as the story has always changed on Sundays so far. Due to an error in the morning, Charles Leclerc wasn't able to test the race pace of his SF24 during the second free practice session. Based on the work done by Carlos Sainz, we could expect good competitiveness, but for the reasons mentioned yesterday, namely the data collected from Friday's race pace, we don't exactly know what to expect from the others. Oscar Piastri was very consistent, and Sergio Perez, who will start from P4, didn't perform badly either. The long straights should allow for overtaking, Although we believe the race will mostly come down to strategy and the driver's resilience, it won't be easy to keep a cool head for all 51 laps. For Lando Norris, who was eliminated in Q1 due to a yellow flag at the wrong time, it will be tough to climb back up from the bottom of the grid. Overtaking is possible in Baku, but certainly not easy, especially if one ends up stuck in a DRS train.